Hello, and welcome back to Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl. Have you been practicing your unconditional love by being non-judgmental and non-critical towards yourself, your friends, and your family? Are you practicing this towards your health and your wealth? Our mission and our purpose is with purposeful passion and lighthearted joy. We want to educate the audience for changing the unconscious mindset and heartfelt attitude, relationship, and behavior with currency and wealth. To heal the core and the past programming towards the freedom that you deserve and apply spiritual principles to wealth. Changing mass consciousness is an individual responsibility by Dennis Weaver. We have a very special, special guest today. This is the first part of a two-part discussion with Bernie Dorman. We are continuing our discussion on wealth transformation from a spiritual perspective. Bernie. Bernie is actually, an ori he's originally from San Francisco, but grew up in Marin County. Bernie Dorman, mentor of luminaries like Robert Kiyosaki, Sharon Lecter, G Greg Reed, Bob Proctor, Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, Les Brown, and Bob Sircosta, who is the original host of S, excuse me, HSN, Home Shopping Network, and the Billion Dollar Man teaches you how to tap into your ability to attract all the components you need to build your enterprise. Mr. Dorman is a chairman and founder of CEO Space International, the largest support organization for business owners which is the AARP for entrepreneurs, inventor of super teaching, a Title I technology for public schools that greatly accelerates retention. He frequently speaks on stages as the guest of nations and a VIP at confer conferences. Bernie is a recognized author, presently completing his newest titled book, Redemption, the Cooperative Revolution. Bernie Dorman is named the most beloved coach of CEOs, has started a cultural revolution to bring cooperation to the world. Is to use that for our benefit. And so, you know, putting that together is the most important thing, getting that balance. I'll tell you how I do it with my grandson, who's a, kind of in the movie star Hollywood basis. I say, coach, remember that screen when you see yourself on X, FX and the Christmas movie and all this stuff. Remember, Cody. There aren't many kids that you know are your age with your kind of bank account from the movies. When you see the screen and you see yourself up there, remember that everybody in your whole life thinks that's you. But you're not that, Cody. You're sitting on Grandpa's lap on the other side of the projector. There may be only five people that know you in your whole life from here on in on the other side of the projector. But get them because they'll be your family. They'll be your rock. They'll be your anchor. Don't buy into what's on the screen. And I say that. <laughs> Hug me, I'll never see you again. Two days later, I walked in his bathroom and discovered his life is fine. That's the first conversation of the book. And then it goes all the way back to the 60s when I first met him. <laughs> Very powerful project. Draw back. It's a wow factor. It draws down. <laughs> Uh, CEOs that are at the top of the industry don't buy into what you projected for your brand and your power and your personal esteem. Buy into where you are on the other side of the projector and have those rich five friendships that know who you are really. Never get caught up to what's on the screen. Don't get confused about who you are. Yes, amen. So tell me, Bernie, what for you personally if there's ever fear, because I know I've heard you say, you know, we all have fear storms. How, how do you handle when something, when a fear storm comes? What, what's the first thing that you do? Well, the exercise I do, which is an exercise for my father, is I project uh, my worst fear. Say it's an, a car accident with my wife, September, and I've lost her. Somebody's told me I've lost my wife, mm -hmm. my best friend, my soulmate, mm -hmm. my partner. And so I put um, on that screen um, that happening which is, you know, because I'm anxious about it. It may be at 3 in the morning. And then I shrink the screen until it comes <laughs> about as small as my hand. And then I walk up when it's that small and put my hand on it till it winks out. And then it's nothing. And then I turn around and say, it's not real. 
fear storms are to test fear and terror barriers that when you walk on the other side, it's all fresh flowers renewed from the rain. And so the, the storms are just temporary passing energies. And I say a lot when I have a, a big fear storm, that's a passing energy. That's a passing energy. That's not a permanent energy. No, absolutely. Forever. That's just a passing energy. Yeah, absolutely. So when you have a conversation with, um, say, some of your the new people that come into CEO space, um, what's the conversation that you have about spirit and money? Or do you? Uh, generally, when people are coming, they're coming to a trade show. And they are looking at a money-back guarantee and a lifetime access to five of them a year for one price. And so they're coming for the value. And what they want to do is go to a trade show that will help them get customers or capital or both, or if they're professionals, 30 hours of credits and a whole bunch of, um, of customers. Now, when they're there and we start in prayer and end in prayer, and we all cooperate and there's no competition, um, the spiritual component of how to do uh, activities with each other in real cooperation, real collaboration, and it comes down to this principle of your spiritual uh, pill you're looking for, which is, and I say it to you, Cheryl, it, would I be here tonight as chairman of a firm in 140 countries um, and, and cooperate with you and would you cooperate with me if I was out of integrity? I mean, you've known me for so many years, but you would back up if my integrity wasn't present, as I would for you. Absolutely. Like he had the strangest secret, and he said it was strange that it was a secret because it was so obvious. He said, what do you mean? Well, I said, it's a big deal about life. Like, I mean, what is it? Well, he said, there, there's no secret to it. He said, you just sit down and Decide what you love to do and then dedicate your life to it. And I sat there thinking about it for a moment. And I was in an office cleaning business. And I liked the business. I did very well. We were operating in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, London, England. So I was, I was earning buckets of money. But it was almost incidental to what I was doing because I wasn't really interested in office cleaning, although we did a good job. I was interested in the cleaners, and I'd get them listening to Leave the Field and reading the books and everything. So the cleaning was almost, you know, incidental to what I was really doing. I was working with them with their... Absolutely. Pete liked dogs, and I'm a, uh, a top shark in the feeding frenzy, and you're sitting with me. <laughs> Do you expect integrity? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a given. Don't expect it from a competitor. I'll tell you, if, I, if I'm a ruthless, brutal competitor, your shields are up, you're knowing how are they going to take advantage of me, you're, you're, and, and we're dealing with each other that way all the time. Think of this. We are a, a generation of humans that used to sink each other's well, build each other's barns, and help each other get through the winter. And we're now a group of humans that are afraid to be with each other, afraid to be in relationship because it won't be genuine. We won't have integrity. And I think we've lost a lot in our country. Let me give you an example. When I was raised in Marin County, and I was going through private uh, parochial schools in Marin County uh, all the way through into high school, on my report card, where I had my report card, was a little line on citizenship, what it meant to be American, the value of being a citizen, and what I owed you under a rule of law. And I knew that at seven and nine, I passed exams. I had to get a grade. This generation of children doesn't have that on their report card. They don't know what it means to be a citizen. It's not taught, and I'm still wondering mm. what that component that was already pregnant in our system as a value compass and a GPS for the American experience was removed. Why was that removed to memorize a bunch of old war dates, like when was the Magna Carta signed, which every child knows is why God invented search? <laughs> um, so when, what, what, key nuggets can you give the audience 
for applying principles so they can understand that to me spirit and wealth are one what what key nuggets can you give the audience and viewers that, to help them Mon agreement and it's here with a great abundance so there is enough energy on the planet um, to uh, pop all the energy mankind needs in a cup of seawater just a cup of seawater in a breeder reactor so we'll get information we can clean the planet up and one volcano like Krakatoa in the 1800s cooled the planet for a hundred years and so uh, we may have screwed things up, but nature may fix it faster than you think with one event that we haven't seen yet in our generation. So um, there's all sorts of breathing. The earth is breathing, and I trust its process. And so for us, as its uh, children and seeds, um, I think the most important thing is that we get away from this um, pyramid of called in competition, our relationship with each other, man and woman. Mm organization, a company of people in a corporation, uh, go, um, is built on fear, punishment, and exploitation. Mm. Fear, punishment, and exploitation. That's the competitive model. And in co it's a wheel where every partner is the hub helping everyone else push on outer wheel momentum for common vision. <laughs> Takes care of about everybody, doesn't it? It is so good to be here with you. And that system is built, whether it's a husband, wife, or a community of county commissioners, or whether it's a state or nation, or a big corporation or small dentist office, that's built on reward, recognition, and celebration. So how do you want us to organize? Do you want us to be organized on reward and recognition and celebration as humans and spirits? Now we have accountability because we get into agreements on money. If I'm going to change time for money, I want to have a certain agreement about what I'm getting for what I'm giving. Integrity, and we have a, a recognition, reward, and celebration, and it's fair. I don't want to be in, in fear, punishment, and exploitation all my life. And doesn't that create all our stress? Yeah, well, don't you think that you know, with, with Barclays and, and Lehman Brothers and all of these huge corporations, that the CEOs have been being prosecuted. Bernie Madoff goes with that. I mean, there's, there's a whole list. And it isn't just in the US, it's all over the planet. Don't you think that they're longing for spirituality in wealth and in integrity? Not in Wall Street. I think there needs to be, but oh. I don't think there is. So having been head of a public-traded global investment banking company for 20 years of my life, if you will, I, I don't see it. I, I mean, I, when I was in Wall Street, um, you know, and I left that industry because it was so uh, devoid of spirit. But and, don't you think that because of all the, the, the one, you know, the CEOs that are being uh, prosecuted, that it's, it's a wake up to spirituality? That, that's no, no, I think that we need a lot more yet. I'll give you an example of why. Uh, let's say we have Jamie Dimon, who's the head of... Uh, the biggest, uh, you know, uh, investment bank on earth, and they lose nine billion dollars of Chase Manhattan's uh, deposit, your your grandma's deposits, by making a, a bet offshore on a bad mm -hmm. bet, worse than taking the money to Vegas. Now, if they took the money to Vegas, he probably would have gone to prison. But because he went offshore and made the bets, he got Congress and say, "I'm sorry." No prosecution, no fine, no consequence. How does that stop them from doing it again? It tells everybody else yeah. in Wall we can get away with it. We how, can how are we going to change that? How is, I mean, it is changing. Don't you think it's changing maybe just a little bit because of what's, what's you know, come up in the last four years? I mean, there's been so many that oh. are getting their hands slapped and et cetera, you know, paying the price. I think the, the regulations of the financial industry uh, used to be much more uh, rigid. And those regulations created a kind of morality that you saw in the market. It was a much more moral market. I think we have to bring back the kind of regulations on mm. big money 
yeah. at its source that foster moral captains, moral uh, people to be in the head of the ship. If the regulations are loosey-goosey and there's that much money, humans will default into greed. They are. No, no, you have to choose one. And they will do things that compromise themselves and you melt down into corruption. Competitive capitalism do, is do a you, set of rules. Do you let think? Me, let me. Yeah. Let me get it's Sorry. spiritual. But it's practical. If we pass 12 laws, that's not impossible. 12 laws. We just passed the Jobs Act, and I was on all day with the SEC in Washington in their conference call meeting on the new rules for that Jobs Act. What does now, that mean? Well, they're passing um, laws that are going to make it next year so much easier to raise money for someone in Marin County who wants to start or expand their business. If a restaurant wants to open up 15 along the coast in California, they can go raise a lot of money very quickly under the new rules, which was not possible before. They don't have to spend a lot of money. They can do it very quickly. It's the biggest change in money raising in a hundred years. And that was a real big effort by Republicans and Democrats. And they really did a great job passing the Jobs Act last year. We were thanked by Governor Scott and President Obama for our and contribution in doing it. We worked very hard for three years on it. Now, I want you to think of these 12, end up with this. You get a system that is totally transparent, yes. totally reportable, yeah. totally accountable, has no secrets, no secrets. How about our system? It's filled with backroom, smoky room deals. It's all filled with secrets. It's not transparent, it's not accountable. And what we get, of course, are, it melts down to corruption, humans corrupt under that Do and it's the it's the box top rules that make the difference so yeah. the human, ten commandments and mm -hmm. some kind of rules to operate by that are simple they're not complicated don't shoot each other don't uh, jump each other's uh, prop each other's spouses and have some simple rules when you get those the world works Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Wow, what a wonderful welcome. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that very, very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I always like to start out, though, by finding out a little bit more about who is in this room. You know, you start practicing those rules, the world works. Do you think that, that it's human nature to be greedy? No. I think it's... I don't it's, either. I think you take baby and smell the baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you have anything but love for what you're holding and smelling, whether that's a black or an Asian or a, a Latino or a white or any kind of child. I mean, you love that baby. Then we put in um, USB ports and we plug in these uh, little peripherals and we plug them in and we load the crappiest software on that mud God. Uh -huh. And that motherboard can never be contaminated. And I tell everyone, when you have the worst divorce, the worst betrayal, back up, back up, and forgive the software. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Baby's still in there. Bless the motherboard. That's never changed from mm -hmm. God. Back up from the crummy software. If we train those babies, I mean, I grew up where we used to have prayer in school. We had citizenship. We had some spiritual values in our schools. They've stripped that out, and look what's happening oh. to the children. Yeah, it's, the it's pathetic. It's real sad. They want that. They want a GPS, but they, do, they can't get it from Twitter and watching uh, Resident Evil 6. Mm. I mean, get it. I know, and the media doesn't help. Vampire movies. I grew up with, you know, um, Leave it to Beavers, and. And I wouldn't wish this on the modern generation, but the Brady Bunch. And I'm saying, <laughs> high school, after you've watched about 12 hours of the Brady Bunch. 
Oh, goodness. Well, I, I would love for you to share a little bit about CEO Space since you've been so uh, humble to come on my show, on our show, because it's not my show, it's our show, because it takes, it takes a team to put it all together. And hopefully there are many people, and there, w there will be many people airing this or viewing this. But tell us a little bit about CEO Space, please. Bob Tucker is the star of The Secret and a billion four have read that book now. He's over in Cyprus and moving to Turkey, but he'll be here at the Christmas holidays, and he's uh, 77 years old. Now, when he was going down the hall of Cedar sinai 18 months ago with open heart surgery where he couldn't travel, and they're gonna take his heart, they mark his chest, they're gonna cut his valve out and put a pig valve in and restart his heart, and if that works, he'll live. He doesn't know if he's gonna live. Now, while they're taking him down that hall, injected with the thing that makes you start to sleep, uh, and he's getting running, his last thing he's doing is texting me. Tech, now, how close are you at that point? And he's texting me, Bernie, I may not make it, but they're going to try to open me so they can expand my chest so I can receive a heart as large as yours. Because mm -hmm. it's hard with anyone I've met in my life, and I want you to know how much I love you. That's his last text, mm. and I, because uh, I, I knew remember that. Favorite. And I said, "No, Bob, they're open your chest because your heart's double my size, and it's crammed up in there." <laughs> and, they, and so he wrote me the first text when he got woke well, all that he's coming to be at our teen program to help our teen entrepreneurs because our holiday program is the biggest family program. People would be here to bring their kids to this program that increases study habits, etc. And people come because they want to change the world, and they start their world, and they start changing their world to cooperative business practices. And they get so much more faster. They speed everything up. And so they're coming to the Disneyland for adults of trade shows that doesn't use a booth and the old model of booths. It uses meals so that we're eating with each other, and ladies and gentlemen are forming a relationship. And we give each other, uh, and we keep our integrity on this, but we give each other appointment cards to do business with each other. get more customers and get, you know, well, you know, you built a team yourself from it. And I'm yes. saying, uh, it's the principles that you, you want to put on air in real time. I call uh, LinkedIn for the soul live. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. And we are um, coming down to our few minutes. And I would love to um, ask you if there's any other really wonderful words of wisdom that you can give our audience. Before we, we say goodbye to you. People are lifting off their hospital bed. They don't want to know uh, if Lord will give them more time to watch the new uh, series on Dallas that's coming out. What they want is more time to do their dreams. And I've crossed so many over. They're content if they did their dreams. And they're in regret if they did not. Yeah. And so I tell everyone the most important aspect of your life that everything falls down from is you switched on, turned on, doing your dreams in your life. Hey, are you having a good morning? You like super teaching? Bob Proctor, star of The Secret, is in the building. It's wonderful. And you're never too old to start. At 82, we put people on television shows. <laughs> dream uh, get the uh, diamond polished and get in charge get charged from it you will get recharged replenished you will get revived as you get closer to the energy of commitment of doing your dreams if you need to recommit recommit to do it
Yeah, thank you so much, Bernie. I really appreciate you being with us tonight. And I know this it's late there. And, you know, thank you. Lots of love to you. Bless you for the work you do. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.